Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk, and today I am going to talk about Beautiful Oblivion by Jamie McGuire. This is kind of like the continuation slash spin-off from the Beautiful Disaster series, so I highly recommend you read Beautiful Disaster and Walking Disaster. I have videos for that Beautiful Disaster and Walking Disaster, which you should definitely watch and read before you get to this guy. Apologies in advance for little thumping noises because three of these are running around. Say hi. Good job. You're okay with being held right now, that's very rare. Okay, yeah, you're bored. I, I knew that wasn't the last. I'm not always the biggest fan of spinoffs because we all tend to put the first book on this pedestal. I did the same thing because Beautiful Disaster is one of my favorite all-time books. But I highly encourage you when reading any spinoff to separate them because it makes it more fun and you're not as critical about it, which I feel like makes the entire experience better. This book was really funny. It made me laugh at the most stupid mundane things and I loved the creative cursing. It reminded me so much of Deb from Dexter. I'm not going to talk about Dexter. I'm not going to do it. I just watched the finale this week. Yeah, I still feel that way. But there was one part where Trent was playing the fucking Flappy Bird game on his phone for like hours. It was just little stupid mundane things that I maybe got too much enjoyment out of, but I like that I got so much enjoyment out of them. There was also this one part where he's just like, comfortable, I'm fucking cashmere. I just love the funny things, the little funny things, I appreciate them. The story follows Cammie and Trent. Trent and Maddox brother, obviously, you all read the series. Cammie is extremely independent, she has a really shitty home life, and that's kind of what's made her so strong. She works as a bartender at the Red. We're familiar with the Red. And she's known Trent like their whole lives. They went to elementary school together, so a long time. But she's never really been interested in him because it's very much one of those I don't want to be another notch on the belt kind of thing. It's just never been a thing that has really interested her. And Cammie does have a boyfriend, so that's a bit of a kink into this story. She and Trent get to be really, really close friends, which is something that I appreciate that I've noticed is almost a, a theme in Jamie's novels. I appreciate the friendship before the relationship thing. And I'm really going to leave the details about Trent out of this because there's a couple things that are a little bit twisty and I don't want to spoil them for you. So on that note, I will see you guys later when you have read this. If you have read it, then keep watching and talk about it with me in the comments. Why my voice is like that, I'm not really sure. I'm just full of voices today. Does this amuse you? Not amused. Oh, God. hi. Okay, bye. Bye. I feel like Jamie's strong suit is really dialogue and conversations. Another really funny thing that I actually forgot to mention until just this moment. It was after Trent, again, spoilers now. It was after Trent uh, kissed Cammie for the first time and then she called into work, asked for time off. So then Trent talks to her and she's just like, I have a bad case of awkward as fuck. <laughs> yes. So Trent, I'm not, I'm never immediately sold with, especially a male lead. I tend to be a bit critical, but that being said, as soon as Olive was brought into the mix, like that earned so many points for Trent. It almost like contradictory, which is again why I like it so much that he, typical not or not so typical babysitter type, is um, watching Olive and he's not just like watching her to watch her. He's like friends with her and she's like this itty bitty little kid and they go to Chicken Joe's and it's, it's adorable. It's just really adorable. So obviously you can tell that I loved the Olive aspect of the story. Say hi. You say hi too? Good job. No, love me. Just love me. Love me. Love me. Good girl. You're gonna fall. You're dead. There you go. I knew that would happen. I never learned. Yes, run away terrified because the bag did it. I did understand Reagan's purpose for being in this story more than just being the roommate and the friend and having that aspect of it to make Cammy more of like a full rounded character. I really understood why. Reagan's situation with Cody and Brazil were in the, was in this, not were, was. And I especially, I think this might have been my favorite part in the entire book, and maybe it's because it was one of my favorite parts in Beautiful Disaster. You know a Beautiful Disaster when Travis like got up on the some kind of bar type kitchen table thing? I don't remember, my memory is nicer than me. He stood up on something very high and shouted, I was on Valentine's Day I believe, at the Sig Tau house, to the absolute fucking horror of losing your best friend because you were stupid enough to fall in love with her. That, which I love, that, like, that whole speech thing that went on in Beautiful Disaster, that was kind of like a, a tie-in with this because Reagan was at that party and she was having all the problems that she was having with Cody in Brazil. And that's really when it hit her because she was such good friends with Cody and it was just this really crazy perfect parallel. 
And I think that was my favorite instance and the one that worked just the best, the best of the tie-in from, you know, Travis and Abby's story into Trent and Cammie's story. I feel like that was just the most perfectly woven aspect part thing. But just baby doll on her, mm, <laughs> that made me laugh and cringe and laugh. For a first tattoo, it was a bit questionable, but because it wasn't her only one, it was like, She's getting tattoos all over. I'm like, oh, I love, oh, the poppies. I loved the poppies and the peacock, of course, because the cover of the peacock, yeah. So I kind of got the feeling before that they went to her family dinner and everything that I would have a problem with someone in her family. Ended up being the father. Everyone had an issue with the father, come on. But what I really appreciated and that I've run into with a lot of books that I don't like but that this book did not do was her father was a asshole. He was a raging asshole, all right? But some of his reasons for why he would get pissed over stupid shit made so much sense. And I really appreciated that because it made him not so much this silhouette of an angry father who's just angry for fuck's sake. I'm cursing a lot. I mean, it was stupid stuff. It was like not enough salt or can be getting a second job because, oh, that was my favorite part, what he said along with that. He was saying that there's no need for her to have a second job because no child of his could be stupid because then she was doing school. It, it just, it made so much sense and that was probably like the best argument point in the argument. Also apologize if the lighting is going in and out. I haven't quite figured out a filming thing so I'm working with natural light here. There was this one amazing part. It was just really funny yet again. As a friend, I can't be concerned about your STD status. So Trent brought a girl home uh, from the red and then Cammy kept repeating the whole yeah, we're just friends. Like, oh, it's fine. Just, we're just friends. Like, kind of kept, like, inserting that into conversations and he accused her of rubbing it in his face, basically. And so then he kissed her and he said, well, look, now you can't deny that this isn't complicated because it's been complicated for a long time. Now you can't deny it. Which was really smart in the moment, but it quickly backfired. So Cammie kind of did the upstanding thing after she kissed Trent and she told TJ. Which, now thinking about the ending, Guys, we gotta talk about that ending when I get there, but I'm trying to go in chronological order. And TJ books her a flight to California. That is his response. Otherwise, very calm about it. Which does make more sense now about the ending. And there is this one line when she was either on the plane or en route to California that I just, I loved. It was an internal thought of Cammie's. Of course it is, because I'm rambling. I needed to know that I wasn't falling out of love with TJ because of distance, and that was her reason for going, and I'm just like, all right, I'll give you that. I personally am not into these really grand gestures or grand shows of affection, but when Trent followed her to the airport and then they were in line at TSA and he was trying to convince her to not go because he knows things would be different if she did go and then came back and it just wouldn't be the same. And I mean, it's not that it's like this big grand thing like he shows up at the gate and it's like, no, stop. It was in line at TSA, which I appreciate like the dulled down version. Still a grand gesture, but not quite so grand. But then he says how he loves her, and I just, I appreciate that it wasn't uh, this huge thing of grandeur, but it's a pretty big deal. There was this conversation that we didn't really get to see, but we did get to see a flashback of between Cammie and Reagan when Cammie was packing for California, and Reagan said, what happened to you, Cam? Confidence used to radiate off you. Now you're like a whipped puppy. We really didn't see her pre-TJ, but we can, you know, kind of take Reagan's word for it. Again, important reason why Reagan's in the story. Why I wave the <laughs> words. And Cammie had this really great internal thought. I didn't know what happened between me being that amazingly confident girl and now. Actually, yes, I did. TJ walked into my life and I'd spent the last six months trying to deserve him. Well, half of the time anyway. The other half I spent doing the opposite. I felt like that was one of the most important internal thoughts because we don't always get a lot of, you know, reasoning out and going back and forth in the characters' heads. But there are always those really crystal clear, super short, simple thoughts that you're like, oh, I get it. So remember how Trent has this thing because of Mackenzie and that whole accident that he has to be the one driving the car. He can't be with somebody else who's driving the car. It freaks him out. And him and Cammie were fighting because of TJ again. And she ends up driving. She's pissed off. They're arguing and they crash. And my notes literally stopped after that because I was like, wait, TJ is Thomas what? Thomas being the other Maddox brother. Question time, you guys, because it's been a little while since I've read Beautiful Disaster and Walking Disaster. Is Thomas the older brother? Is he? Is he? Because if he does, is, that makes sense. I've talked to a few people and I, we think, we think. Because I vaguely remember in one of the books that, um, like, the older brother was not necessarily estranged, but just away a lot. But how it was actually 
unveiled that Thomas was TJ I thought was really clever confused the shit out of me but I went I read it and reread it and reread it and I was like holy shit I did read that right what is going on all I gotta say is that and they totally caught me off guard and that made the book a bunch better okay one second I need to finish my sentence deal it really just made the book better it was like this really confusing moment of what and I want to know more but I liked it and I feel like especially after like reading through my notes and preparing for the video and speaking about it like I like it more the more I talk about it because I feel like I get to think about it more. And how did Travis not know? Because I thought that Travis may have saw TJ at the bar with Cammy because he showed up I think maybe twice just in this book and they've been dating for how long? Did Travis know and then if so why didn't he tell Trent? But then how did Trent not know or anybody else or Reagan know? Because don't they all look the same? She had this moment of all the Maddox boys having practically identical DNA or something like my mind is blown. I want to hear all of your thoughts and discussion stuff down there in the comments. I maybe should have warned people that there may be spoilers down there because we'll be talking about the ending. So just do me a favor and do like Astrid spoiler alert before you comment so they have, you know, a chance of not being spoiled. But I will see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk. Bye.